everyone, welcome into my channel, Colleen C to Serendipity. Welcome into my new viewers and welcome back to my Serendipity subbies. Today is February 3rd, 2023, and I would like to bring you this day in history. On De February 3rd, 2005, Alberto Gonzalez wins Senate confirmation as the nation's first Hispanic Attorney General despite protests over his record on torture. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Senate approved his nomination on a largely party line vote of 60 to 36, reflecting a split between Republicans and Democrats over whether the administration's counterterrorism policy had led to the abuse of prisoners in Iraq and elsewhere. Shortly after the Senate vote, Vice President Dick Cheney swore in Gonzalez as Attorney General in a small ceremony in the Roosevelt Room at the White House. President Bush, who was traveling, called to congratulate him. Excuse me. <clears throat> Gonzalez was born in 1955 in San Antonio, Texas, son of migrant worker and grew up in a small crowded home in Houston without hot water or a telephone. He joined the U.S. Air Force in 1973 after graduating high school. Following a few years of service, Gonzalez attended the U.S. Air Force Academy. After leaving the military, Gonzalez attended Rice University and Harvard Law School before Bush, then governor of Texas, picked him in 1995 to serve on his general counsel in Austin and in 2001 brought him to Washington as his White House counsel. In this new role, Gonzalez championed an, an extension of the USA Patriot Act. After Gonzalez became attorney general, he faced scrutiny regarding some of his actions, most notably the firing of several U.S. attorneys and his defense of Bush's domestic eavesdropping program. The firing became the subject of the Senate's Ju Judiciary Committee in 2007. Concerns about the veracity of the same of his statements as well as his general complacency also became into began to surface. Democrats began calling for his resignation and for more investigations, but President Bush defended his appointee saying that Gonzalez was an honest, honorable man in whom I have confidence, according to an Associated Press report. A few months later, however, Gonzalez decided to step down. On August 27th, he gave a brief statement announcing his resignation if effective September 17th, stating that it has been one of my greatest privileges to lead the Department of Justice. He gave no explanation for his departure. In his resignation letter, Gonzalez simply said that this is the right time for my family and I to begin a new chapter in our lives. And now I'd like to bring you another This Day in History. On February 3rd, 1966, the Soviet Union accomplishes the first controlled landing on the moon when the unnamed spacecraft Lunik 9 touches down on the oceans of storm. After its soft landing, the circular capsule opened like a flower, deploying its antennas and began transmitting photographs and television images back to Earth. The 220-pound landing capsule was launched from Earth on January 31st. Lunik 9 was the third major lunar first for the Soviet space program. On September 14, 1959, Lunik 2 became the first man-made object to reach the moon when it impacted with the lunar surface. And on October 7, the same year, 
Lunik 3 flew around the moon and transmitted back to Earth the first images of the far side of the moon. In the late 1950s and early 60s, the U.S. space program consistently trailed the Soviet program in space first, a pattern that shifted dr dramatically with the triumph of America's Apollo lunar program in the late 1960s. I want to thank you for watching today, and I want you to stay safe and stay blessed, and remember to smile because I love you, but more importantly, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ loves you the most. And remember, I go live every Saturday night at 5 p.m. Central, that's 6 p.m. Eastern. And I want everybody to have a blessed day, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!